Chief Justice of India, Dr. D. Y. Chandrachut, Chief Justice Designate, Justice Sanjeev Khanna, Judges of the Supreme Court of India, family members of Justice Chandrachut, Attorney General for India, Solicitor General for India, Rachna ji, Vikrant ji, members of the Executive Committee, senior advocates, my brothers in the fraternity, brothers and sisters in the fraternity. Uh, what do I say? When you have to judge the journey of any judge, any judge, what is the benchmark on the basis of which you judge that journey? We can criticize any judge because there is nothing called perfection in life. There is also nothing called eternal truth. Perfection is relative. Truth is relative. And you have to judge the man and the judge on the basis of the times in which we live. So when we will write about Justice Chandrachut, we will discuss his judgments, his manner, his simplicity, his affability, his patience, all attributes of one of the greatest judges of this country. <laughs> Many of you don't know that I have had the privilege of arguing before his father who was the judge of the Supreme Court of India for 17 years. He became a judge in 1978, and he left office in 1985. And he was Chief Justice for seven years and 14 days. <laughs> now, Chief Justice Chandrachud has to, had to match up to the qualities and the achievements of his father. I must say you outpaced him, Judge. You truly out outpaced him. Now, when I started talking about the values of a judge and how do you, how do you measure a judge and his contribution to the legal fraternity, well, I, actually, you look at the Constitution. What's the most important attribute of a human being? The most important attribute, life and liberty most important attributes. No person, no person can be deprived of his life or liberty, save in accordance with procedure established by law. And the law is declared by the Supreme Court, sometimes wrongly, sometimes rightly. But you judge the man and the judge on the basis of that yardstick. How often, how passionate, how committed he was to life and to liberty. The other yardstick on which you judge a person is, did he further the cause of equality before the law? Now, equality before the law is inequalities of the state, which permeate into society and ultimately land up in court, and solutions found by the judge to ensure that to, 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 to ensure that equality to the extent it can be protected is protected, because there is no such thing as perfect equality either. So you move in an imperfect world, in an imperfect court, and you judge the judge by how often he has moved towards perfection, to defend life, to defend liberty, and to serve the cause of equality. Sir, that's the yardstick on which we will remember you. And let me... I don't want this to be a very boring long lecture, so I'll just sort of encapsulate my thoughts, and I've given you a, in a sense uh, of what I think. Because the one thing that we must note is that the court is not built from the walls of the courtroom or the arches of its buildings by the work its judges do to fulfill their constitutional duties. Ultimately, 
the legacy of any judge is measured by how he has sought to safeguard citizens' rights. And in that regard, it is beyond all doubt that Chief Justice Chandratut has rendered some phenomenal judgments. Your tenure was deeply rich, generative, bringing with it the development of a vast landscape of law, thereby impacting the future course of the justice delivery system. Through your judgments, you demonstrated a willingness to chart unknown waters and to reflect that this Chandrachud has perhaps exceeded the legacy of his father, who was the longest standing Chief Justice of India. For the issues of today bring a complexity that is far greater than it was in the past. I remember when I started practice in this court, there were only four courts. Court number five was a registrar, where the registrar used to sit. And there was no complexity in the kind of matters that came before the court. But the world has changed. In fact, just the other day, and I can share it with you, and these are challenges that these, our judges will have to meet in times to come. Now we have technology even moving forward to this extent that you can incubate 3,000 children without a woman getting pregnant. You can incubate them for nine months. You can find out. You can actually decide what their attributes are going to be, uh, what their IQ is likely to be, how tall they can be. This is technology which has moved forward already. Now, how do you build a society when the march of technology is so oppressive that it will destroy the very dignity of the individual and the independence of the human being. These are challenges that we, were, we are going to meet. And that's, to that extent, those challenges you have already tried to grapple with in the judgments that you have rendered. Take, for example, the privacy judgment. He declared it as a fundamental right under Article 21. But then what did he do as far as Aadhaar is concerned? He gave the minority judgment and said, we cannot allow Aadhaar to enter into the lives of individuals and ultimately um, control them. Because the state has all the information about us, when we go, where we go, how we go, where we we'll reach, what is our destination. All those facts are known to the state. The state has become all too powerful. And the challenge before the court as to how to deal with the power of the state, that's the real challenge before a court, at least the Supreme Court of India. Now, these are the challenges that we'll have to address and you will have to address in years go by, as years go by. And the other uh, attribute of Chief Justice was that he was willing to deal with these complex issues. And I dare say that the past Chief Justices would not allow themselves to deal with those issues for years, whether it was 370, or it was same-sex marriage, or it was electoral bonds, or any of those very large issues that uh, actually changed the contours of our being. You were willing to take it forward. You were willing to address the issues within the contours of those complexities and you address them with great clarity. And therefore, we must thank you for all that you have done. We may not agree with you. It's not necessary to agree. But at least we must give you and, 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 and salute you for the fact that you were ready, willing to deal with those complexities. Now I can go on and on and on, I can go about pluralism, I can go about secularism, what he has done for that, I can go about the expanding equality through embracing diversity, that's what he has done, expanding, expanded equality by embracing diversity. And you've been especially, you are a trailblazer in this regard. The kind of protections of disability rights, of the, 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 the judgments articulate a strong right-centric jurisprudence that reinforces the dignity of the individual and firmly places the burden on government and society at large to remove barriers and enable access for persons with disabilities. 
We all know that there are about 50 to 90 million people in this country who suffer from disabilities. And you were the first Chief Justice to take, to take on the battle. And you took it on with great... Um, you braved it out. You were a staunch votary of nothing about us without us. You want to talk about disability rights? Have us there to talk about them. That's the greatness of this great judge. I can just go on and on and on. Caste issues, dismantling gender stereotypes, access to justice and contributions to the legal fraternity. What have you done? You have actually given access to the millions of people in this country who want to watch what our judges are doing, how they are delivering justice. And then one day, one day, I mean, whether it's good or for the bad, there's going to be a forensic audit. There will be. Because if you expose yourself to telecasting, then people are going to say, start criticizing you. But the fact of the matter is that you took on that challenge. You allowed people to criticize you. What, what can be braver than that? So finally, let me say, you will be remembered for what you have done and also for what you have not done. You have been a pioneer, a torchbearer, and a groundbreaking innovator. You will be remembered for being one of the most patient judges to have ever adorned this court. You did not allow your temper to get the better of you, and I have never seen another judge with such limitless patience and passion for the law. We will ever we will forever think fondly of your rare combination of sagacity, systems thinking, and meticulousness, and your judgments will speak for you after you leave the walls of this hallowed institution. I wish you well. I wish you Godspeed. And let me tell you this. The journey of a lawyer, whether on the bench or at the bar, never ends. Your journey never ends because you have to, your contributions to the law and society will continue. And let me end, end this with a little poem that I have rendered for you. This is how it goes. I'll give you the thing later. I wish to say right at the start, you're a class apart. I wish to say right at the start, you're a class apart. You set the bar, walk the talk, monitored outcomes like a hawk. <laughs> Thought of those who had no hope, marginalized and simple folk. Pulsated with the people's will, meandered through the law with skill. <laughs> Matters which lay dormant for years, you dealt with them unlike your peers. No rancor with patience and ease, you waded through turbulencies. The institution has your stamp, unlike others who never planned. <laughs> With an even hand, you oft displayed ends of justice seldom frayed. Freedom of speech, fraternity, you leave behind a legacy. Judgments whose fragrance with last revisited notions of the past. Free speech and human dignity, cherished notions of privacy. Alternate means of justice spurred local dialects to be preferred. Arbitrary actions you abhorred, moral values underscored. Batting in the final test, you played your innings with great zest. <laughs> Leave behind fond memories, you were the constant gentle breeze. Thank you very much. I now request Mr. Kapil Sibal, President of Supreme Court Bar Association, to present his poem just recited to Honorable Dr. D.Y. Chanchur, Honorable the Chief Justice of India.
to present a memento on behalf, behalf of Supreme Court Bar Association to Honorable Dr. D. Y. Chanchu, Honorable the Chief Justice of India. I request Mr. Kapil Sibbal, Ms. Rachna Shivastav, uh, Vice President, all other office bearers to kindly join on the dais to present that memento.